Well, I'm about to test this out. I'm about to test this out. It looks like you can hear me because I see squiggly things moving. Very nice, very nice. Well, this is the first podcast that I will be doing from my new location in my house. My house, y'all. What? Yeah. So, no holes barred. No holding back. Getting her done. Yeah, so... Decided to give it a go again. Um, get back on the podcasting bean. And uh, do some beanie things, man. And uh, speaking of beanie things, there have been quite a bit of uh, spicy situations going on across America. And it's interesting that I've uh, to note that, before I get into it, that... Um, Quite a few interviewees have stated that this is strictly an American issue, an American problem, which could easily and could have easily been solved up to this point. But let's not discuss what could have been. Let's discuss where we're going from here. Gun violence. Dun, dun, dun. Just going to bust it out there. Gun violence. The big GV. It is... uh, been prominent in American society for oh, so many decades, centuries, stuff, you know, countless number of eons. And because guns have been so glorified in in on t- on television in media in general all facets and everywhere you look guns are glorified until until they're not used oh I'm sorry until the shit hits the fan and shit gets real let's put it like that because the way that guns are glorified is that or had been in the past is like and I, I said this before like the good guys the sheriffs the wholesome white hat sheriff who's um clearing the town of riffraff he's the one the one with the gun who gets it done you know what i mean and he was looked up to yeah i want to be a sheriff because i want to have a gun and i want to get rid of riffraff and who has always been pointed at as being riffraff people who don't fit the blonde hair blue eye or just caucasian skin those people and it's you know if you don't look like them, you got to go because you're a barbarian. But the barbarians are taking the guns and shooting those that don't look like them. It's so strange. So the propaganda has been out there all this time. And now, um, what is it? This month, just this month in May, there have been two major um, school shooting, uh, two major shootings, I'm sorry, mass shootings, not school, but one was a school shooting that happened, um, just recently, more recent than the one before where 10 people were killed in, um, a grocery store, if I'm not mistaken. There was an 18 year old boy who drove there and I call him a boy, um, so he drove four hours to get to this the store in Buffalo, New York, and just start shooting people, I guess. Because I, I, I'm getting to where the narrative is that white person, particularly young white male, goes with arsenal, if not one or more um, assault rifles, deadly weapons, goes into a public place and shoots up people and gets away with it because when the police arrest him they take him gently in the night whisper oh so softly in his ear as they stroke his hair and tell him it's going to be okay okay so that narrative has been there and it is still there um and and so after this kid does this This freaking domestic terrorist kid goes and does this um, a few days later. Kid about the same age in Uvalde, Texas, goes and kills 19 people in a school. 
And um, the tale gets more interesting. The, 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 the police were called frantically. They were getting bombarded with calls, I'm sure, from those inside who are in the situation, begging for help, asking for help, pleading for help, because they were being terrorized by this domestic terrorist kid who comes into the school with a firearm, barricades himself in, and decides, I'm going to wreck shop, people. I play video games. I know how this shit's done. By the way, video games has nothing to do with this because I was going that step to just say, I'm sure at some point they're going to introduce this into the vernacular, into the narrative. So just be prepared. That's that's one option. Anything to get these kids off. Um, so... He kills 19 people, and the, the cops were um, were called, and the police get there and save their own children. They go in there um, amid the chaos, amid the, the pain and destruction, and have the wherewithal to say, oh, wait, my children are in danger. Let me save my child. And they were being a parent in that moment. Not realizing that there were so many other parents that were out there. So many other parents that felt the same way. And then it was said later that, I don't know if it was the police chief or the governor. We'll get to that again. This goes far, far up there. Tell you, Texas, you do it bigger. Um... The police chief, if I'm not mistaken, one of the higher-ups in the police force said that, well, the police were frightened um, that they were going to get shot. And I would like to take this moment right here, right now, as an American to say that every officer on every police force has a job, especially when you're out in the field, that connects you with the environment, with the neighborhood, with the people, and when you get called out to a dangerous scenario, I'm pretty sure you have time to think about that call as it comes in. Breaker, breaker, one nine fifty two thirty four seventy two in progress, whatever the numbers may be. I'm not quite familiar with the code, but there are numbers involved. And then you go, roger that, and you're on your way. So, you know that you're faced in, with deadly situations as a part of your job, as a part of what you signed up to do, and what you got trained for. And this is for every police officer, ball cop out there, every single one of you. If you are trained for your job, you've been doing your job, you're on your job, then you know the parameters of your job. You know there's danger involved. So knowing that there's danger involved, your training should be the first thing to kick into gear. Should be. Because you're dealing with civilians and armed criminals. And in this case, domestic terrorists. And each and every one of them get away. Each and every one of them get a pass. Man, you guys are terrible cops. If, like when you were kids and you were playing cops and robbers and every time they got away, you would suck. Why would you want to keep trying to do it? If you're scared and you're running away and they keep getting away, find another job, B. Now is the best time to do it, too, because there's so many places that are hiring. And there's so many. In fact, start your own business. I don't know. I don't know, but don't put yourself in harm's way when you know you don't want to be in harm's way in uniform quit your job man stop being a cop if this is too much for you to handle although you signed up for it and went through the training real life is never really like training starting from kindergarten on And we as adults already should know this. And if we don't, hey, there's a wake-up call just for today. Just have it wake you up and just stay awake on that one. 
Um, and there are times where things are way better than, than we expected them to be, which is pretty awesome too. At the same time, getting back on the subject, I was in the military. I've said this before. I was in the Marines, not Coast Guard or anything like that. I didn't ring a dinner bell at any of my job assignments. I actually was a weapons specialist in the military. And knowing when I signed up at 17 years old to go into the Marines, people go, oh my God, Marines. Just that alone, you're like, ah, you know your job is dangerous and you know to expect something out of the ordinary to pop off at any moment. Which is why they trained us. 13 weeks of training. You know? Now, honestly, I don't know if there's ever enough training to go into a combat situation and have it, you know, be ideal. I don't think there's any, like, weeks, 13 week of training for that. But you can be as trained as you can to keep your composure as much as possible and stay focused. And... That's pretty much what we're asking as humanity, not this group of people, that group of people, people, just in general, as humanity, we're asking, get it together. I'm asking, get it together. Let's all, as a unit, get it together. And whatever fear you're having as a police officer Get trained in that shit. Go back to the basics. Don't even be out in the field anymore. We have enough going on without you being insecure about yourself. You not knowing how to handle your own job that you signed up for that you're still going to get paid for after the fact. Stay your scary ass at home or go back to the office. Get more training. Get more training. I don't know, but just don't be out here in situations where we need you. We as the public freaking need you. We need you. We don't want to need you. Trust me. Being a black woman in America, no, we don't want to need you. But because it's your job, we need you to be out here doing your job. Do your job if that's, if you're so determined and, 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 and I'm a police officer or I'm, the, do it. Your job is not to step back and let someone else with a gun, especially who just got their balls dropped, who had, you know what I mean? These people, I, I let me go back. Balls just dropped, got anger issues and acne, and his girlfriend probably just broke up with him, and he's got a D in his homework. You don't want to fuck with a kid. You don't want a kid like that fucking with a gun. You know? Because I don't know what happened in the atmosphere from the time of high school days of yore to where we are today. I mean, I just, it irks my soul and it vexes my spirit just to know that the, 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 it takes a feather, just a feather of discontent for murder to be justified in the, in the judicial system. You know, it's insane to me how, especially on high alert we are right now with everything that's going on, taking its toll at one time and this, you know, there's, um, under the skin before you get a pimple, there's stuff going on and it builds and builds and builds until you get that pimple and then the pimple is going to pop. So there's a lot of building, 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 and this pimple is coming to a head in American society. Rather quickly. And um, I'd like to take time out to say this too. 
because this this has also happened a couple of times in right in my neighborhood, the road rage thing. I want to say that's probably directly related where um, the person driving erratically and like a maniac is playing the victim when the person who they've tried to cut off and treat like shit when that person confronts them on the road. And I'm not saying in an angry, oh, kiss, kiss my ass, I'm about to, you know, take out a bazooka and blow your tailpipe out. I don't know. I mean, like, if you're cutting somebody off on the road and you flick them off and then you got to stop at the red light and then they flick you off and then they go ahead of you and now you're stuck behind a truck, well, that shit happens. You know, but to have the the flame of that type of thing be ignited and then go to a point where it can burn down an entire forest because it's just, it's in the air. People are so freaking heated. They're heated. There's, first, you know, I'm not going to get political, but I am saying what's going on right now. The prices of rent are going up like I don't even like a ladder just freaking going up and then the food costs are going up inflation everywhere gas and then people here's the thing like people's just the the minimum wage just went up and a lot I don't know if it was across the board but it did just go up and the cost of living had been uh already up when the minimum wage is down. I think the minimum wage has just now been, just now kind of caught up, but it's not caught up to where it needs to be. So before it was, before it was, I think it is $15 now. Before it was that, it was like $7.25 or $8.25 an hour. Right. So that's a nice little drastic jump. But when it was $8.25 an hour, the cost of living reflected that. And as the cost of living has gone up and up and up and up and up, it was still stayed at eight twenty five an hour. So now that it's fourteen fifteen dollars an hour, the cost of living has already been fourteen fifteen dollars an hour. So it's kind of like your square one again because now inflation has brought the prices up some more, and you're back to square one. You had a little cushion in between when you first got that fifteen dollars an hour before inflation really hit because you know. I'm I'm using really heavy quotes and sarcasm here, okay? I just want you to pick that up. War in R- Russia um, has caused <laughs> the prices in America to, to go up, if you believe that. Mm. Uh, my nose is growing as Pinocchio is speaking it now. And um, so that is going on. Um, and because of the pandemic, let us not forget that started uh, before inflation and the war, right? So the pandemic, people weren't allowed to go outside, lost their jobs, couldn't go back to work unless you were an essential worker. Um, And so the economy was going, that was the economy. (laughs) You didn't hear it, but I heard it when it was doing all that. Um, And uh, now the the turnabout of, of this is people who, have lost their jobs and now it's harder to find something to eat and harder to find some place to live and the gas prices are going up and how, and not only that, we've got, um, the people in government making it more difficult to receive anything to help. There was a stimulus package sent out two, three times, maybe, And that was it during a two-year course of um, this real heavy pandemic. And then what was the answer? Go back to work. Get vaccinated and go back to work. Get vaccinated first and then get all 15,100 shots and then go back to work. Because, hey, we need you to be back there making that tuna for Subway. That's not really tuna. We need that, okay? So risk your life for that because people are going to come out of the woodworks coughing, sneezing, sniffing like they always have been. Really, you should probably, you know, wear masks anyway. But, hey, that mandate has been kind of like, wear them. Wait, no, don't wear them. You can wear them. All right, look, here's what we're going to do. You can wear them with I 
except after E and only on weekdays ending with a W and starting with a Y. So, but then wear them every couple of hours though. Wash your hands and wash somebody else's hands. And that is how we do our mask mandate. Yeah, governed by the CDC right there. Just read it. That's how ridiculous they sound. Every other day, it's that, don't that, that, don't that, that, don't that. But you just told me to do that. No, don't do that. But then tomorrow I want you to do that. Just don't do it. I feel like I'm doing the hokey pokey, so then I turn myself around, because that's what it's all about. And COVID was still out here killing people, while everybody else is still trying to find jobs, while everyone's grieving the loss of their loved ones that they can't even see. You couldn't even go to a funeral. Kids couldn't graduate from high school. And all of this topped with domestic terrorism. How in the hell is it that this 18-year-old kid is going to, or they're saying for him, I guess, they're writing his narrative, that he was distraught and overwhelmed by being in the house due to coronavirus for, yeah, so check this out. All I'm doing, I just, like I said, it's it's the either really young kid domestic terrorist or the middle-aged white dude domestic terrorist or old governmental political sitting in the White House real-like domestic terrorist slash genocidal maniac yeah, I you know, call it what it is. Um, it's one of those three that their lives are so downtrodden and so just perpetually um, filled with anguish that they're allowed to have an excuse to do the shit that they do that affects everyone. However, take just a regular black guy running down the street, jogging down the street, minding his own business, getting gunned down, and getting no justice. Take a woman who is sleeping in her own bed, who is an essential worker during these times, getting shot and killed, and her boyfriend getting arrested for reacting in a manner that he very well should have and then the cops who did it well not being responsible for it at all even though they did know that that was not where they were supposed to be and they did one of them out of the three of them got charged with shooting and endangering the wall you know because that wall was That wall was sacred. That was like Mother Teresa Teresa Woodwork there. Uh Uh-huh. So it's, um, it's hard, I understand, to try to stay sane in a really, 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 really insane world. Freaking ridiculous. And, yeah, the world's crazy, but America, you got to put the freaking cool whip topping on that mofo. He was like, kapow. You ain't seen crazy yet. Hold my beer and tequila and whiskey and vodka. I got this. America, you are right. You are number one. You're the number one bullshittiest, shitty ass. I don't know. I mean, and I live here. (laughs) And try not to be... um, Mm, I try not to, to to be like super angry and definitely not deluded by what's going on in the world, but also to try to keep my mind safe and sane and stable through all of this. And I know we're plenty of us are having this struggle. So, excuse me, I had to burp. <laughs> so... As a team, I'd like to band together with you 
on the sanity train and how, I mean, sanity can be overrated. Totally. Totally. I cosplay as the Joker. I know. (laughs) But at the same time, let's all be proactive in doing what we can about helping each other mentally through all of this insanity. Let's talk to who we need to talk to. Let's take the steps we need to take, even if it's just baby steps. Contact who we need to contact to enact the laws that need to be passed to end gun violence. Let us talk to who we need to talk to to ensure the safety of all involved in public places and private places so that we can have a better sense of community where we feel safe to be together around each other. Let's put in stricter policies for those who want to carry arms because not only is it quote-unquote a right, that is a huge responsibility. Huge. Like I said, I know guns have been glorified and gun violence even glorified because it's been so ingrained in our society we don't even realize it. But I notice if you watch kids' movies and kids' shows, you don't see, you see what you do see is, let's get along. Oh my gosh, you're different? Cool. And then somebody, you turn away because he's your friend because he's different, blah, blah, blah. But then everybody in, in the end ends up being together and being like a whole little like community and family and tribe. And it's pretty dope. Teen movies, angst. Fuck my parents. I'm going to go have sex with this girl and that girl. And, I'm, you know, it's just, and then I'm going to fail in school, but then I'm also going to be good in school. And I'm going to get the nerd to help me with my homework. It's the, <laughs> it's the tropes, the living tropes, you know? And then on, on the side, you also see these things that are um, ingrained where it's just like, especially if parents have it, like the guns are cool, the guns are this, and the guns and the heroes, like I said, the heroes have the guns and the guns and then the shoot them up. R-rated movies where the hero, Keanu Reeves, John Wick, uh, then had you had the Matrix. There's a lot of bullets, a lot of guns. And and the good guys always have like the, an arsenal of guns. Here, Kingsman, let me push this button. We're going to go down the basement. 14 levels while I tell you about all the shit that went on in my life from the time I was 12. And now that you're completely caught up, here's an arsenal. Push a button. Boop. Every gun that you could possibly imagine. And then we have a smoke screen. Then we have a car. And then we have a cane that turns into a knife that turns into an umbrella for a rainy day. This is glorified in so many ways. And hey, again, I'm guilty of enjoying it. The gluttony of, ooh, this weapon does this. My, if I push this, this does this. Oh, I'll be super protected if I get one of these. Wow, I would really love to have. Because they make it look so fucking cool. They make it seem like you're a badass and you are so super protected and can't nobody fuck with you if you have one of these. You are a hero if you have one of these. If you gun down somebody with one of these bad boys, they were the bad guys. Think about it. Look back at the movies that you watch, the movies that you sit with your kids and watch, the movies that are out. Yes, it's magic now. A lot of magic and Doctor Strange and such. It's wonderful. Also, in those movies, you find people with guns. And it's like, ah, the bad guys have arrows. But the good guys have guns and they're going to gun down the guys with the arrows. Pew, 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 pew. Still, still, to some degree, cowboys and Indians. The good guys and the bad guys. And the good guys with guns, eh? And now we turn around because they've been decades and centuries of no gun laws because my second amendment right to bear arms well hey guess what if you want to take that literally i say go to the forest find a bear try to get their arms and see how that goes you have a right to it and i want video just to prove it happened um so on that note i'm going to hmm do my part to see how I can get information out there to stand with those 
on the right side of the law here, on the right side of just right, because there's no way on the planet, there's no way on the planet to justify mass murder. There's Unless there's like zombies and you're trying to survive in some kind of crazy zombie apocalypse. In that case, they're already dead, so it's not a big deal. But truthfully speaking here, there's no way to justify it. It doesn't matter what is said. The person that did it, that committed the heinous act and the, the terrorist act is, in fact, a domestic terrorist. Y'all don't want to call it what it is because he's well, somebody's like a judge's son or, I don't know, a, a, a police officer's son. His, his dad, I don't know, but I do. Well, I do know it's because he's white. Let's go there. Let's just fucking put it out there, okay? It's because little Jimmy Bob is white. That's why. These kids who did this are white. That's why. And the question that usually comes to mind when you find out, well, I can't say you, but when I find out, I was like, where are their parents? Where are the parents? How are they allowed to have semi-automatic weapons? How are they allowed to... How did they get to drive four hours to the school? Did you not know where you... What the fuck? Well, he's 18. I mean, he's pretty much on his own. Dude, I understand. Up to that point before homie got 18, you don't know how to sit down and talk to your kid? You don't know how to sit down and talk to your son? Here's what we're not going to do, okay? We're not going to, when you get pissed off, take it out on everybody else. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to use your voice and you're going to talk. We're going to have conversations about what the fuck's going on in your mind. What's going on in your brain? What's happening? Because I tell you this, as a parent, there's no reason to ever be afraid of my child. Adult that he is now. But if you have a child that you gave birth to, that you raised in your own home as yours, and you're afraid of them, that child's probably not the entire problem. Nope, let's not say probably. That child is not the entire problem. You are also part of the problem. Because if that child senses and smells your fear and knows that you're afraid, and you, of course they are because of the way you treat them, Oh, well, they treat me like that, too, because I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do when they act out, and they just get angry, and they throw stuff and break stuff and scream and cuss and yell at me. Oh, my God, he hit me and screamed and told me he hated me and told me, fuck me, and screamed. You have an 18-year-old or older, 16, any, any child older than five doing that shit in your house? You're a huge part of the problem. You are, as an adult, as a parent. Yeah, just throwing that out there, putting that... Right there in the sandwich. You know? Because if you don't nip something in the bud and you let it continue to go on and go on and go on unchecked after years, what are you going to say? How are you going to, how are you going to try to check it now when it's the new norm? Hmm. So America... America, your gun baby has been being bad for many, 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 many moons. So many many centuries and so long. But you've been rewarding that bad behavior and you're like, hey, guns don't kill people. People kill people. And you know what? People with guns kill people even faster. So let's address the problem. Let's do what we need to do. And Texas governor, first off, I forgot his name. Please look it up. Fire him. Fire him. They just need to gut the entire police force and start over. They can also do that in Florida. I mean the entire state. (laughs) I'm talking both of them. They're cousins. It's cool. And just start over. (sighs) Racist acts will no longer be tolerated. They shouldn't have been tolerated in the first place. However, 
that would go against the norm of the American society as we know it. So now that all that is being dismantled and people are really seeing, really seeing the anger and pain and hurt that it's causing, there's hopefully a good possibility that will change and gun laws will actually be laws and we can do something about this. No more mass murder, man. No more genocide. No more domestic terrorism. Because see, the part of me that gets fumed and gets lit every time I hear about things like this, it's, I was sworn to protect and defend against enemies both foreign and domestic. And a lot of us tend to forget about that and domestic part. So let's just remember, we do have terrorists that are domestic. They can be any age. Let us call them exactly what they are. Don't pussyfoot around it because that's part of the problem. That's enabling bad behavior. Okay, right. It's 2020. Let's let's step this shit up. Okay. Now, thoughts and prayers are not going to be enough. It's beautiful. Is not enough. Let's act. Let's be responsible adults. Let's think about the future of our children, of our society, of our humanity. And make good choices. Okay? I'm Ann Walker, and I'm out. Y'all stay black. God bless. Peace.